Hey everybody, my name's LT and welcome back to the channel. I'm pretty excited because today I'm going to be kicking off a brand new project track. Well, I say brand new, but it's the furthest thing from it. Here's all you need to know. It's actually really old and when I'm done with it, well, there's a chance that it might be fast. But I can guarantee you one thing. Before the end of the day, I'll get it to do a burnout. Let's check her out. In the automotive world, there are two types of people. Those who like to have a nice shiny vehicle that looks like it belongs at a car show, and those who like to go racing. Now, typically, I fall in the second category, and I've often said I don't care if my truck is dented, faded, or looks like it's not even all the same color. But as long as it's mechanically sound, has no rust, and you can modify it to go faster, well, I'm all in. And today, I'm putting my money where my mouth is with a new ugly truck. And there it is, a 2000 Chevy Silverado 1500. Now, if you know me, you know this thing's got a 5.3 LS underneath the hood because, well, shoot, what else would you start with? From the outside, this thing does not look great. It looks like it spent most of its life out in the sun, which it apparently has. I picked this thing up down in Alabama, and typical of GM, the paint on the hood, the clear coat is completely faded, but for the most part, the body is actually pretty straight. But rust-free is the one thing that I needed to find, and that's why I went south. I looked all around Tennessee for a vehicle that was not rusty, and I just couldn't find them. I looked at three or four trucks, and they all had the rocker panels rotted out, or the bedsides rotted out. Just not something that I really wanted to take the time to deal with. Now, this truck, yeah, dented up. As you can see, the rear quarter panel, this is probably the worst part of the whole thing. It looks like somebody tried to kind of bash it back out with a hammer. Um, yeah, it doesn't look great, but that's all right. For a truck of its age, the interior is actually in not bad condition. It was sort of taken care of. The cloth seats, they don't really have a whole lot of tears or stains or nothing like that in them. Now, even on the driver's side, that's usually where they wear out the most. This one, again, is pretty clean. It does have the full console in the center. It has the little console thing on the roof with some lights in it. Um, yeah, it's got a little bit of a funky smell to it, but that's all right. We'll get it cleaned up. Carpet, it looks like somebody replaced that because it's kind of that darker brown color. I think normally it would be a tan that matches the rest of the interior. But for the most part, everything is there. Everything's in pretty good shape. Now, underneath the lovely faded hood, now this is the reason why you buy a truck like this, Chevy LS Power. This one's the 5.3 LM7, and other than this uh, bright chrome intake tube, it's 100% stock. Now the great thing about the early Silverados is all the room that you have kind of right down in this area for, I don't know, uh, upward facing exhaust or all kinds of accessories. I'm going to build this thing up in several different stages, you know, start with the basic bolt-ons and then ultimately I would like to go with forced induction, but time will tell how far we go. So this Silverado has all the makings of a perfect build, has a fairly straight, fairly clean, but rust-free body, has an LS powertrain, and there are plenty of parts available for it. So what's the bad? Well, the first thing is the mileage. This truck, 324,000 miles on it, but surprisingly, it actually runs fairly well. The engine doesn't make a lot of noise, and it really doesn't burn a whole lot of oil. The bad part is the transmission. It's got a 4L60 in it, and right now it won't shift into second or fourth gear. I believe that means there's a broken or slipped band, or the servo that applies the 2-4 band is probably cracked. So I'll take a look at that eventually and see if I can maybe get the stock transmission running again and get this truck on the road just to put some miles on it. So the first thing you're probably wondering is, how does a truck with 326,000 miles drive down the road? Well, uh, I guess kind of like you'd expect, but at the same time, it's really not that bad. 
The steering wheel is mostly straight. It kind of drives in a straight line. It doesn't wander around like you might expect it to. Um, the interior yeah, it has a lot of rattles, a lot of loose panels, just a lot of annoying sounds that you don't get with some of the newer vehicles, but overall, it's really not that bad. Now the transmission, that's where things get a little tricky because remember, second gear is gone. So I got to drop it down to first gear, kind of get into a little bit, and I'll bump it up to third, kind of let the vehicle coast for a minute until it skips second, shifts right into third gear, and then you're good to go. So underneath the hood, we've got the 5.3 liter LM7. That's kind of the go-to LS swap engine. You know, you go to a junkyard, you want a 5.3, it's probably gonna come out of a vehicle similar to this. Power-wise, I totally forget off the top of my head. I think they're rated somewhere around 300, 320. Um, but that's just a starting point. We're not gonna leave it stock, obviously. We'll probably start by doing the basic bolt-ons, things like upgrading the camshaft, upgrading the valve train, you know, long tube headers, free-flowing intake, things like that, get it tuned up. And I know you can add quite a bit of power just doing the basics. Uh, the transmission, obviously, I'm gonna have to go through that or find a junkyard one or rebuild the one that's in here for now. The 4L60s are good for maybe 450, maybe 500 horse if you're kinda careful with it. Ultimately though, I'll probably swap out the 4L60 for a 4L80 because I do want to have a power number somewhere, well, hopefully over 500. Um, I guess time will tell there, but the plan right now is to swap the transmission out in the future. Kind of a bolt-on, call it a stage one build. So I've only got first gear, but I kind of want to give it a quick acceleration test to see how this 300,000 mile 5.3 gets on. All right. No brakes, foot to the floor, see if it'll peel out. <laughs> yeah, it's burning out a little bit. <laughs> you gotta love those single track rear ends. I mean, really, this is just a fun truck. It, it costs me next to nothing to buy. It's gonna cost nothing to modify. I mean, that L5P I've got, Man, you know, anything you do to that is going to cost a couple thousand bucks at a time, but I mean, you could buy anything for a truck like this for a few hundred dollars and have a whole lot of fun. And that's what this whole build is going to be about. Just kind of budget-oriented, fun, beater, hot rod truck that you can drive every day or take to the track on the weekends and just not spend a lot of money. And if it breaks, well, you're really not out that much money. It's the fun truck. That's what this is. Get some junk tires, we might as well put them to good use, right? It's gonna hold it right there, about 4,000 RPM. Make sure no one's around. <laughs> and we'll roll it out. <laughs> Still spinning, there we go. Man, you just can't beat it, this is a good time. Spinning both tires that time for a minute. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. I'm, I'm really excited to kick off this new build. It's been a long time since I've had a gas powered truck. Um, I'm just excited to see what we can do with it. It's kind of going to be a budget theme. Uh, it's kind of going to be fun. Really, that's all it's after. I've got a lot of plans for this thing, and I want you guys to stay tuned for the whole process. So, if you would please subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. I'm going to try to get a new video out about once a week, but I can guarantee you this one thing. You will see plenty of burnouts. See you next time.